I did not kill Joffrey, but I wish that I had. The small council meets to discuss the progress of the war, and Tyrion learns that Lancel Lannister is still near death. Randall Tarly defeated the Northmen attacking Duskendale, with Helmund Tallhart reported dead, and Robert Glover fleeing west, being chased by Gregor Clegane. Tywin informs them that Davin Lannister is rounding up a new army and will join them with men from the Golden Tooth, and then march on River Run when Rob Stark returns north. They all agree that Rob will march for Moat Caelin, for he is a king without a kingdom. Kevin reveals that Balon Greyjoy has sent letters with terms of alliance. Greyjoy wants the north, but Tywin says they will not treat with him while other options present themselves. Littlefinger agrees to go to the Eyrie to marry Lysa Arryn, and once he is consort, he will deliver the Vale of Arryn into Tywin's hands. Since Littlefinger will be leaving within a day, Tyrion is named Master of Coin. Pycelle informs him that 300 Dornish men ride for King's Landing in response to Tyrion's negotiations, despite the hatred between Dorn and Highgarden that has gone on for hundreds of years. Mace Tyrell does not like the idea of Dornishmen riding across the Reach. Tyrion considers how the Lord of Highgarden talked like a general, although he had never won a decisive battle. His victory over Robert Baratheon at Ashford was won by Randall Tarly, and the Siege of Storm's End lasted for a year without result until Eddard Stark relieved the castle. Garland Tyrell has been named Lord of Brightwater Keep, since Alistair Florent is a traitor. Varys brings word of a three-headed dragon being born in Carth, and that the Night's Watch is begging for help against a wildling army. Lord Tywin does not want to hear about rumours of dragons, and is disinterested in views of wildlings, claiming that, if the wall is overrun, the Starks and Greyjoys will have a new enemy to deal with, even speculating that they may be able to make a deal with Mance Raider, overriding the attempts of Varys and Tyrion to have gold cloaks who deserted during the Battle of Blackwater forced to take the Black. He adjourns the meeting, asking Tyrion, Cersei and Kevin to stay. Tyrion warns them not to trust Littlefinger with his quest to the Vale, but Tywin is resolute, believing it better to have Baelish ruling the Vale as opposed to the likes of Jon Royce or Lynn Corbray, and adds that Littlefinger has proven his loyalty, telling Tyrion that just the other day, Baelish informed them of a plot by the Tyrells to bring Sansa to Highgarden and marry her to Willis Tyrell. The Hand is aware that should Mace Tyrell ask leave to bring Sansa to Highgarden, they must consent or else offend the Tyrells. Tywin wishes to circumvent this problem by offering Cersei's hand in marriage to Willis, but Cersei adamantly refuses, but her father has the final say, and Cersei storms out of the room in a fury. Tywin then tells Tyrion that he will marry Sansa, further solidifying the Lannisters' position, because should Rob die and Sansa and Tyrion have a son, the child will become Lord of Winterfell. Tyrion protests, arguing that a marriage to Sansa is worthless, while the Greyjoys hold the North and questions why he isn't being forced into a marriage with Balon's daughter, but Tywin counters that the Ironborn won't rule the North, they will just plunder it, uniting the Northmen against them, which the Lannisters can use to retake the North when Tyrion brings Ned Stark's grandson home to claim his birthright. Tyrion argues again, protesting that Sansa is still a child, but Tywin retorts with Cersei's testimony that the girl has flowered. Tyrion suggests sending the girl back to her mother as a gesture of goodwill that might make Rob Stark bend the knee, but Tywin coldly retorts that if they do that, Sansa will be married off to one of the Northern or River Lords to shore up her brother's alliances. Tywin adds that this marriage is a reward for Tyrion's previous service, and threatens that if Tyrion won't go through with it, they will marry Sansa off to Lancel or another of his cousins, and find Tyrion another bride. The threat of being married to Lollis Stokeworth, as well as the prospect of being made Lord of Winterfell if he is to be denied Casterly Rock, is enough to cow Tyrion. As a last attempt at protest, Tyrion argues that any claim Sansa might have to Winterfell will be made irrelevant when her brother gets a child from whichever Frey girl he marries, and learns to his surprise that Robb Stark has broken his pledge with the Freys and married Jane Westerling. Sir Kevin reveals that Lord Westerling's wife is a Spicer, a house of extremely low birth having descended from traders. Tyrion is confused by the lack of fury in his father's eyes at this betrayal by the Westerlings a house sworn to Casterly Rock. Lord Tywin states, 
Jane Westerling is her mother's daughter, and Rob Stark is his father's son. I have only loved one woman. Only one. My entire life. Your sister. 